Hi, I'm Christoph Forsberg and I'm the project leader of the Mint project. I want to uh, welcome you aboard today and I want to welcome you to this uh, demonstration flight. Unfortunately, I can't uh, participate myself uh, since I am on my honeymoon trip. Uh, so I hope you can find that as an acceptable excuse for me not to be there. Before we start, I would like to just say a few words about the objective for the project. The MINT project has the uh, objective of demonstrating the minimum CO2 in the terminal airspace during, during descent. So what this means uh, is that we will demonstrate the optimized or the optimum aircraft performance uh, that, is cap that is, can be capable of achieved from a current modern state-of-the-art aircraft. And we are demonstrating it and analyzing the result from the CO2 perspective as well as from the noise distribution perspective. Since all of you can't participate up front in the aircraft in the cockpit during this flight, we uh, have put together this uh, video for you. So we will try to explain to you the different parts of the project and what is needed from the aircraft perspective to be able to achieve its optimum. So I will now uh, hand the word over to my colleague Captain Christoph, Stoff who will uh, describe the different parts of the system as well as guide you through the flight. And uh, as of that I would just want to thank you all for coming to be part of this historical flight. Thank you. Every day in Europe, more than 28,000 flights are operated by more than 4,700 commercial planes. Millions of passengers are transported like this every day. It is forecast that the number of daily flights will double by 2030, giving 20,400,000 flights per year. Unfortunately, as it's managed today, European airspace has reached its limits. This situation has increasing economic impact, both for passengers and for airspace users. The environment also suffers greatly. This is why the management of European air traffic must be modernized. This is the challenge taken up by the European Commission in launching the single European sky with Caesar as a technology component. The European community and Eurocontrol have thus joined forces to found the Caesar joint undertaking. The Caesar joint undertaking is a unique and ambitious public-private partnership 
which aims at modernizing the air traffic management infrastructure in Europe. To assess what's at stake in this modernization, let's look at how European air traffic is managed today. Eric Plateau is getting ready to fly from Stockholm to Brussels. One of the main problems of the air traffic management today is its fragmentation. I'm going to take a flight to Brussels and we are not going to use the shortest route to get there. What route is taken by an airliner? One hour earlier, the crew of flight SAS 589 arrived at the crew base of the airport. It's here that the SAS pilots work out their flight plans. I'll stand there by the coast. That's okay. Yeah, okay, okay, that's right. Sure. Here is the flight path Stockholm-Brussels. The start of the route is fairly direct, but the plane then deviates from the straight line by executing a number of detours to avoid airspace that's very congested or is off limits. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and very welcome on board the Scandinavian Airlines and Starlines flight bound for Brussels. During this two-hour, 20-minute flight, the plane will be handled by five different air traffic control systems using different technologies. Over time, CESAR will do away with this fragmentation by standardizing and modernizing systems that are now becoming obsolete. The system is very manual. Uh, as you've heard, the system is only connected today via a radio between the air and the ground, basically a radio that was invented in the 1920s. The radio is also a potential source of error. We have to listen up on the frequency, and even if uh, just 5% of the calls uh, is intended for us, we listen up anyway. Uh, it increases the risk for, uh, of missing uh, calls for us. Eurocontrol Center, Maastricht. It's here that the CPDLC is tested, the first component of the data link communications that CESA will develop. This is an uh, electronic message which we can produce on the ground. It's very standardized messages, and this will be transmitted through the air onto the display of the cockpit. If the pilot wants to request a change of course, no further need for radio contact. He enters his request in the onboard terminal, and the air traffic controller sends him the answer by text message. In future, more and more communications will be done digitally. Today's situation, the, the flight is basically only known to the pilot because he's flying his aircraft. The information he's got on board in his computer is not available to the rest of the actors of the system. Tomorrow, his information will be as available as any other information regarding that flight, which basically mean that without him asking for it, the rest will play along and do as much as they can to make an efficient flight out of that one that is flying in the sky today. This information sharing will make it possible to predict trajectories more efficiently, so the air traffic controllers will be able to use more direct routes and also make the capacity of the various air corridors more productive. For the airports, it's also an opportunity to anticipate flight arrivals better and to prepare ground services. For the passengers, the benefits of this defragmentation of airspace will also be significant. For example, our flight from Stockholm to Brussels. With a less fragmented flight, we could gain between 12 and 20 minutes on one flight. This shorter flight duration represents an economy of fuel of 400 to 700 kilos and a reduction in CO2 emissions of the order of 1,300 to 2,300 tons on this particular flight. Over time, CESA will make it possible to reduce the environmental impact of every flight by 10%.